Project White Wagon is to the point where we needed to build a set of headers. So we contacted the good folks at Burden Stainless and Jack Burns went over what the requirements were going to be for this motor once we gave him the information about weight of car, camshaft, valve size, cylinder head, and the pertinent information that he requires to be able to produce a product that's equivalent to what the motor needs. Through the course of many years, Burns has built many, many sets of headers and they've got a lot of vast experience with different combinations and what the headers and collectors are supposed to do. First is what we're used to many, many years ago when you bought a set of headers, you put them on a car and hope for the best. And we've learned, even in our experience, we build a number of sets of headers a year that the collector, the header length, the header size, all has a lot to do with the correct performance of the motor. And if the motor is efficient, the motor will be consistent. And in super stock, you need something that's very consistent, as in with all types of drag racing. When discussing with Jack the different type of headers that we needed for this, and uh, the requirements that were needed, we came up with something that was each tube that comes out, each tube that comes out has to be six inches. Then the second segment has to be six inches, and the final segment that goes into the collector had to be six inches. Jack was very exact about how he wanted the header tube to come out of the cylinder head. And as Jack says, no cheating. That exhaust tube has to come up. So the flows out of the exhaust port of the cylinder head continues to flow greater and it'll pull and scavenge some of the exhaust out of the combustion chamber, which is what you want, more efficiency. So we started off with a inch and seven eighths primary tube that was six inches. <clears throat> then we went to a two inch tube which was our second tube, that was six inches. And the third tube ended up being an inch and an eighth, which went into the collector. And it was designed off the type of collector that he recommended for this car. And in doing that, Burns also offers a X-Design header consultation, and that helps you design what your needs are for your particular application. Now in this case on Project White Wagon, there are a lot of limitations as to what we can do as per NHRA Superstock rules. One of them was the motor can't touch the firewall. And you cannot shave the shock towers like you do in some other classes and other sanctioning bodies. So that created a problem. So we have the motor in line with the drive shaft tunnel we have the motor in line with the rear end housing in a pinion. And I actually moved the motor over just slightly a little bit to fudge that some so that I would have room. And you can see how tight this side is from here to here. And we do have a little bit more room on this side from here to here, which makes it a lot easier to do. So those are some of the specific challenges that we ran into in doing this. And you really ultimately need to go with a set of fender well headers on this because the cylinder head on an SB2 motor is so much wider here than a conventional wedge head motor and it pushes the exhaust port out even further which you end up running out of a lot of room on this thing. So the motor's up as high as we could possibly go with it. It's as far back as we can legally go with it. And we were able to build a header design that would work correctly with this application and come out looking like they're correct and, and a nice job that's done to them. When you deal with somebody like Burn Stainless and their years of experience and technology and know-how, it's best to ask them questions about what you're doing and they will guide you and help you in telling you how you should fit things, the proper types of tools to use, what type of weld should be on there, what type of rod to use, what type of gas to use, how to fit stuff together correctly, and what you'd run into on your build. So it's always best to ask these guys that know how to do this and have done this many, many times for many years, and it'll help save you a lot of time and effort and aggravation on this. Because as you can see, this is quite a puzzle project that we have to put together on this. Okay, let's go over the collector that Jack wanted to use on this car. With the tailpipe here, 
in a certain type of wedge that he uses to the 18 inches of header collector with the four into one, two and one eighth tube that connects to the main header. Now we've got some problems with Project White Wagon that make this even more difficult is the fact that the header tube has to be short to begin with and you have to have tire clearance and you only have so much room to work with. So we had to take all these things into consideration when we were doing this project which makes it very time consuming. We actually built a jig to hold the header collector in place so you can get the left and right sides to be exactly the same. We do that with a protractor to get the angle correct and a number of measurements to get it spot on so that the car looks and works and acts correctly when you look at it. But Burns makes this type of header collector in various forms, but this is the correct one that they recommended for the correct use of Project White Wagon. Now remember, I know it looks like it's a small header tube, short distance, but this is only a 292 cubic inch motor, although it looks big in the picture with the valve covers and the CFE tunnel ram on it but it's still only a 292 cubic inch motor. So we have to incorporate a lot of things into this project that are very custom and one-off on this to be able to make it work and act and do correctly. Okay, we're gonna go over what we meant about tire clearance on the collector. As you can see, the collector had to come on the outside because this is a fender well type header collector and header system. And the tubes came out from the side of the front end, front chassis, and it comes down along the fender well. We also had to make sure that the distance was correct so that when the tire turns left or right that it's going to have clearance and not hit the header collector or the header tube. This is a Mickey Thompson 27.53009 tire and it's just a mock-up tire that we took off of our stalker and uh, we use that to mock this up with so you can see there are some problems in trying to design and put all these things together. It's not a one-size-fits-all type deal on this. So you've got to take your time and care and planning all, plan all these things out when you do a project like this. Okay, we're going to go over what we talked about, clearance and so on, on the front end. As per NHRA rules, they want the correct wheelbase on this plus or minus three quarters of an inch. So it's not like you can shove the front end way forward to get yourself more tire clearance. Well, we start with the hardest side and we started with pipe number two, which was the closest to the inner fender well shock tower. That was the most difficult one to make. And I'll tell you what, that was, uh, it was no easy task trying to get around that close shock tower and come up around and into the fender well. But you know, we ordered the correct amount of J bends from Burns, and we always get a couple extra ones in case you have a mistake, so you don't run short at the end of the project and looking for another J bend to try to make a tube to finish it up. So, in ordering your tubes, always get a couple extra tubes of each size that you need. Now, Jack talked to me real close about what type of wire to use and the heat and so on on this. We used an 062 stainless wire that worked really really well on this and we tack welded each tube into place as we fit it. And you can see how we we mark it and then we take it off. We mark it with a magic marker, we take it off and we put it in a, on a bench and then we'll tack weld it and put it back in place. It's real difficult to try to do that with them on the car. And then when you go to weld the stainless, make sure the heat is low, you got a nice straw color to it. If you've ever seen a burned stainless collector and a craftsman work and a precision that they use on their welds, they're going to force you to be a better welder and better fabricator just trying to follow what they do. That's how nice their stuff is. One of the first things when you start doing a set of headers is you have to put the primary tube into the header flange, which they're stainless and we got those from Burns, they're CNC and they're very, very nice pieces. But always remember, you have to have this tube all the way in to the end of the flange so it's up against the cylinder head. So you have full engagement of this tube into the flange. That way it'll be sturdy and it won't break off and crack. You'll have full engagement and it'll give it plenty of support and strength. We also will weld the inside of the header tube to the flange as well. 
so there's no gap in there. Now you guys are looking at all these crazy bends and, and so on that we have in here. Burn sells J bends and U bends in different width sizes. If you look in their catalog, they'll tell you what they are and how to measure them. And the reason we use different widths and radiuses is so that we can reach over and do some things like here would be one style because it has to reach a little further, but this one can be a little tighter. As with this one here, that has to come over the number seven tube. 